Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'bur wa Iyaka Nasta'in Idina Siratu Mustaqim Siratu Al-Ladina An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Magdubi Alayhim The meaning to the English would be more or less in the name of Almighty God, most gracious, most merciful. All the praise is only to God, most gracious, most merciful, the ruler on the day of judgment. You alone do we worship. And you only do we turn to for guidance. So guide us on the straight path. The path of those that have your favor. But not the path of those that have your anger. Nor those that go astray. Those are the first seven verses of the Quran. When I read it in English, it's not Quran anymore. It has to be in the Arabic. If you write it... It's not Quran, it's a book, Kitab. Only when it's being recited is it the Quran. You say, well, that sounds like just semantics, you're just talking about words. No, it makes a big deal, and I'll tell you why. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, He has promised to preserve the Quran until the sun rises in the west. The recitation is promised to be uh, preserved. And there's no way you could preserve a piece of paper until the last day, is there? No. Even though we have very old Qurans that date back uh, about 1,400 years, still what we're talking about is the recitation. What you heard me recite right here is the same if I go anywhere in the world. If I go anywhere in the world and ask Muslims, listen to me, do you know what I'm reading? They know. I'm going to ask from the Muslims here in the room tonight, if you memorize this that I just read, Surah Fatiha, raise your hand. In Arabic. Wow. Well, guess what? That didn't really surprise me because that's what we read five times a day, every day anyway. We read the Quran every day in our prayers. The Quran is easy to memorize, except what Allah wills. So much so that today over 9 million people have memorized the entire Quran cover to cover. And over 1.5 billion people have at least memorized three or four chapters of it. And by the way, 88% of Muslims in the world are not Arabs. The majority live in Indonesia. After that you'll find a whole lot of them in India, Pakistan, Malaysia, so, former Soviet Union is almost all Muslims. Do you know that? If you find any country that has Stan after it, except Hindustan, that's India. But all the other, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, all those countries, 94 to 98% Muslims. Even they, they sur survived all those years under communist rule, they were all Muslims. Turkey, Muslims. 100% in Turkey except for the ruling class, which is like 1%. Brings us to another issue. A lot of times people point to this country and that country and they say, see, Islam is blah, blah, blah. There's not a single country today being run by Islamic rule. Not one. So if you want to blame anything, you have to blame their system, which is not Islam. So you can't go and look at it and say, well, that's Islam, because it's not Islam. Afghanistan is for sure not Islam because for the last 200 years the rulers themselves have been killing their own sons so they couldn't take it away from them. And that's sure not Islam. I have some of my friends from Saudi Arabia and, and they have nice things there. Very Islamic. But if I'm wrong, tell me, is it Islamic State? Is it having Khalifa? No, okay, that's it. So you can't look at these countries and decide what you think about Islam as their governments because they don't follow it. They follow a mixture of, let's take some of this 
and some of that. And by the way, this country here used to be founded a lot on the Bible. How many of you know that? Did you notice I said used to be? Because there are some very clear things in the Bible that people don't adhere to today. They don't care. And so if you compare this to that, you can understand. It's the same problems. You start out good, but then what happens? So I think what we are doing now is starting to understand a little bit more. We can see about language. We can see about faith. And now let's close with this. Let's find out what exactly is the faith of the Muslim and then see if that's something that uh, upsets you a lot or you like it. It's up to you. This is where you can really choose what you like because you're talking about what somebody believes. According to the faith of Islam, there's only one God. And he has no partners. And he does what he wants to do. And it's all up to him. And he doesn't uh, accept any worship except directly to him. He doesn't need the idols and images and things to go through. He doesn't accept that people say things about him or represent him when he can represent himself. And in this case, I'm using the word vain. When people become vainglorious and God-like, he doesn't accept that. He has rules that he sets down as a test for the people, even though he knows they're going to break the rules. The reason for that is not that he wants them to be angels, but he wants them to repent to him when they make a mistake. That's the purpose of the life. Additionally, he created, as I said, everything. It means every single molecule in the universe. He knows where everything is all the time. He's having no difficulty. He even created one long ago who used to worship him. But then he broke away and became bad, evil, because of his pride. He became jealous of Adam. And then he vowed a vow and he said, Just let me, God, live long enough and I will take Adam and all of his sons to hell with me. I bet you can guess who that guy is. We call him Iblis and you call him Lucifer. Or the devil or the shaitan, this guy. And Islam also teaches that, as I mentioned earlier, each person will be responsible for the good or the evil that they do. There's a day of judgment. And this is what makes everything fair. It wouldn't be fair. This life could never be fair if it weren't for the Day of Judgment. Because we see here good people have hard times and rotten people get away with murder. Literally murder. But not really. Because on the Day of Judgment, it's all going to be sorted out. It'll all come back. It's what we say in Texas, all them chickens are going to come home to roost. It'll, it'll all be worked out. Because God doesn't forget and He's capable of putting it all right out in front of somebody and they're going to see what they did. Additionally, we believe in prophets. Muslims believe in prophets. That God doesn't talk to each person individually, although the person is always available to talk to God anytime He wants to. It's a very personal relationship. But it's not going to come like a big flashing light in front of you and say, go this way, go that way. But still, you can feel that God's guiding you. No doubt about that in Islam. But there are prophets who are much more guided and can guide us. And they start with Adam and then one called Nuh. Noah with the flood. Okay, Abraham. Lot called Lut in the Arabic. Moses. David. Suleiman, Isa, you put a J in that, it becomes Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the only one we have an, a record directly to him to hear what he actually said in his language. And what he said was that all of those prophets before me were exactly like me. And they all said the same thing and did the same thing, and the only exception was the son of Mary. In this case, he said, this one, and the Quran says the same thing, is born with no father. He's mu'ajiza in Arabic language. Milagro in Spanish. He's miracle, birth. Immaculate conception. She was a virgin who gave birth by the power of God. And a 
any Muslim doesn't believe it, he can't be a Muslim. He cannot rationalize it and say, well, maybe, you know, it could be X or Y or Z. There is no X or Y or Z. This is the condition of faith in Islam to believe in the miracle birth of Jesus. Also, that he was a mighty prophet. Not only did he prophesy things that would come to pass, and they did, he was prophesied in earlier testament that he would come, and he did. And in addition to that, he did miracles that nobody could dispute, including, and you don't have this in the Bible, including that he spoke right after he was born and scared the people half to death because they were accusing his mother. Hey, you, you know, you come from a good family, lady. What are you doing here like that? I'm giving Texas version of translation of the Quran. But, but, and she had vowed a vow of silence, so she pointed to the child, the baby, and Jesus, peace be upon him, said to them, Peace be upon me the day I am born. Peace be upon me on the day that I die. Peace be upon me on the day that I'm resurrected. And then he began to tell them about his mission. And they're going, huh? The kid's talking. So this gives you an indication of what Muslims believe about Jesus. Then it continues through his life. We don't have the missing gaps. Also, that he, uh, peace be upon him, healed people by the power of God from skin diseases like leprosy and so on. He healed people from blindness, born blind, and they could see. Cripples could walk, and even dead were brought back to life through his ministry. This is a belief taught in the Quran. Now, if you haven't read that, you know that, you might think something else. Because I've heard a lot of people say, you know, that Muslims, they don't even believe in God. They believe in Allah. Read that yesterday. Yesterday. And we're supposed to be intelligent people. And these are people writing, journalists writing, saying something out here. Teachers in schools saying, there's something there. Well, oh, Muslims, they got similar to us, only they don't even believe in God. They believe in Allah. And I already explained to you that the word Allah was used by Christians before there was the word God. So, I want to finish up with the belief system in Islam. And, and particularly I want to mention about Jesus, because so many people ask me, about the nature of Jesus' Islam. We don't make him God. Make sure you understand that. Because he's creation, and we believe God never ever enters his creation. Because he's not going to put himself that low to enter it. So be sure you, you know I said that. Jesus, peace be upon him, though, is a very mighty prophet. He has a distinction, again, something else, that he's not dead. He's been alive for 2,000 years and he's coming back. The teaching from Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that in the last day he will descend down in Syria and the true believers will recognize him. As you think what I said earlier, I never heard anybody else mention this, but I discovered it myself and I, I'm impressed by this. It maybe mean nothing, I don't know. But that happens to be where the last Christians are but still speak Aramaic language, so they'd be able to talk to him pretty good, wouldn't they? It's pretty cool, huh? So you're going to say, well, but wait a minute, where are, you, where are you going? I thought you, you... Are you saying that Muslims believe that Christians can go to heaven? Because within Christianity itself, there are groups who will tell you that group of Christians can't go. Is that true? Have you ever heard that? This group said that group can't go? And that group said, that group's not going to go. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? But the Quran is very clear. It said, from the Jews and the Christians, you will find some that are real believers. And those who followed their prophet, they're going to go to paradise. That's what it says in the Quran. One of the other mistakes that a lot of people fall for is when somebody will use the word infidels to represent what something is said in the Quran. They substitute this word for five different words in Arabic that do not interchange. There are people mentioned in the Quran very clearly as Muslims. Okay, those are the ones who know about Islam, they know about God, and they're trying to submit to God. They understand that there's a God, they're trying to do His way. Let me give you an example from the Bible, two passages in the New Testament. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you believe that and you try to do it, you're doing Islam right there. That's, that's it. That's the essence of it right there. So it can't be a new teaching because that's the word. 